is it a specific type of exercise and is it the, to the same degree? Because one of the things that has come up in my community a lot is how do we measure autophagy? How do we know? I love what you're saying. Like, we don't, we don't have enough information to know how often we should be stimulating it. We just know that it's this incredible self-repair system that we haven't been talking enough about. So there's no way to really know if you're doing too much or too little as far as I've seen. Mm. And when it comes to exercise, what I've seen is that it's a specific type of exercise that increases autophagy. Is, is that correct? Um, well, I think that actually both will do uh, like resistance training as well as cardio exercise both will do it uh, i think yeah like the difference is like how fast are they going to do it mm. so what what is going to basically determine you know like yeah like the autophagy isn't like this on and off switch there is something happening all the time it's just that at a certain point it accelerates more and that like a uh, time gate at which it happens is determined by your liver glycogen status so your mm. liver glycogen regulates the energy and nutrient sensing pathways in the body like ampk and mTOR so uh, mm. once your liver glycogen is low which happens when you're fasting or when you're exercising a lot then after that you activate the ampk pathway which is like this ketotic pathway that promotes uh, ketosis and uh, fat oxidation and autophagy and uh, catabolism essentially that's where it happens with uh, fasting you see that the liver glycogen stores tend to deplete within like 16 hours or, or 24 hours they're going to be probably depleted completely uh, with exercise you know depends on how long you exercise and what type of exercise it is if you're doing cardiovascular exercise, yeah, it may take like an hour or something, I think. Also depends on like if you do it in a faster state or if you do it in a, in, in if you're already in ketosis, then it's probably going to take a shorter time. Whereas compared yeah. to doing the cardio um, after having eaten like 500 grams of carbs or something like that. Uh, so it depends right. on, on those things. And uh, yeah, I think what I like to think about this exercise is just accelerating the process of going into autophagy, uh, whereas fasting is kind of, you know, you can't... Um, exercise for you know five hours a day you're gonna to have to take a break right. whereas right. you could fast for you know even three days in a row without any problems so yeah you know i think it's yeah for sure good to do this time sheet eating and uh at fast at least 16 hours or maybe 14 hours at least uh per day and to deplete the liver glycogen and go into some aspects of autophagy and ketosis uh and then at like certain time points, uh, use exercise as well as a, like a gas pedal or something uh, to accelerate it uh, more. So like stacking them together and would be enhance autophagy. What I'm curious on is that if glycogen is, uh, we see glycogen stores in the liver, we also see it in the muscles, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're exercising, you're actually going after the muscle glycogen. And when you're fasting, you're going after liver in the most mm. concise way I can explain that. So. If you're fasted you're, and the liver glycogen is coming down and you're going into a, a cardio workout, you're bringing skeletal muscle glycogen down because it has to use that glucose to be able to perform its its duties. Um, would that be a benefit if like somebody wants to lose weight, somebody wants to get fit, somebody wants to get healthy? Would, would you recommend coming at these different glycogen stores and stimulating them together like that in a stacking form? Uh, yeah, I mean, doing them combined is uh, for sure, I think, more optimal than doing one alone with uh, with cardio i think yeah it depends on the intensity of the cardio that you're doing right so you you will start to burn uh, the muscle glycogen with cardio as well if you um, exceed the vo2 uh, threshold vo2 max uh, threshold uh, which is when you start to switch into the anaerobic state and uh, usually okay. it's like 65 percent of your vo2 max is where you start to burn muscle glycogen but below that you burn primarily fat and liver glycogen so any kind of this low mm. intensity cardio is where you burn the liver glycogen more and uh, when you do like hit cardio or sprints and uh, that kind of thing that's where you start to burn muscle glycogen i don't think muscle glycogen directly affects autophagy uh because it doesn't affect uh, ketosis either like you can have full muscle glycogen and still be in ketosis uh, yeah. so the liver glycogen is probably where the energy measurement or where your body detects the energy status and the muscle glycogen is only used like as, as a backup fuel to uh, do right. high intensity uh, activities. Um, right. But still like there's also like studies showing that the resistance training, which is uh, like an anaerobic activity that also activates autophagy. And uh, probably the reason for that is uh, because of this high amounts of energy stress. Um, so yeah, any kind of physiological stress still promotes autophagy as well by activating the AMPK pathway. So AMPK is also not only linked to the liver glycogen, but it's also like this uh, physiological stressor detector almost. And uh, you see that with uh, saunas, for example, saunas also help with autophagy, uh, cold exposure. And uh, I mean, even like, you know, coffee, 
which uh, is also right. like this calorie restriction mimetic technically by turning on these pathways and having a autophagy effect.